Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming we finally have a release date for Dying Light 2. New Horizon Forbidden West gameplay impresses, Cyberpunk 2077 has a new director, and much more. There's finally a light at the end of the tunnel for Dying Light 2. The developers released a new gameplay video showcasing the game's character, story, world, and parkour action yesterday. This is the first new footage we've seen of the game in a year. A story broke several weeks ago claiming Dying Light 2 had been delayed due to a combination of mismanagement and the pandemic. And while the report may very well be accurate, the new gameplay certainly doesn't look compromised. The environments are massive and lusciously detailed. The parkour system seems a bit more fluid and refined from the first game. Combat has gotten a pretty major overhaul and now features a complex dismemberment system. There's three different factions that you can interact with and these interactions have a meaningful impact on the gameplay story and world. As you play, you can restore essential utilities to areas of the map like water and electricity. Doing this expands your arsenal of weapons and gadgets while also revitalizing survivor camps for specific factions. When night falls though is when things get crazy. Like the first game, Dying Light 2 features a day-night cycle, at night more powerful and aggressive zombies come out of hiding, and avoiding them isn't as simple as just taking the rooftops, but zombies leaving their hiding spots means exotic loot is up for grabs. The gameplay video makes it look like infiltrating a zombie hideout requires stealth, which is a pretty interesting mechanic for a game focused on direct confrontation. The video is impressive across the board. Visually, the game is quite remarkable. Dying Light 1 was a great looking game for its time and frankly still holds up well today, but the sequel is shaping up to be a generational leap forward. The lighting and character models in particular really stand out. The level of detail on display in the environments is also incredible. Every inch of the game looks like it's packed with chipping paint, overgrown weeds, and zombie guts. The video ends with the game's release date. It launches on December 7th for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Now before we continue, I've got a quick word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Outriders. Outriders is an epic RPG shooter from Square Enix that throws you into a failed colony planet where you're literally fighting to save what's left of humanity. You can play solo or with up to three players total to co-op your way through a highly detailed and lengthy campaign. The story is fun and engaging, the gameplay is surprisingly challenging, and you can even dynamically bump the difficulty up to earn better gear. There's four classes to choose from, the Trickster, Pyromancer, Devastator, and Technomancer, each with their own unique abilities. Now I personally went with the Technomancer who focuses on ranged combat and abilities. Leveling up his skill tree allows me to maximize my weapon damage and lets it punch much harder at range, which is awesome, especially for headshotting the baddies from 100 meters out. The graphics are great and overall it's a really easy game to get into with an expertly crafted world and story that makes you want to figure out just what the heck is going on in this weird alien world. Check out the game, I'll leave a link in the video description. It's available on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and even Google Stadia. When it comes to impressive looking games, Sony also had a lot to show yesterday. They hosted a state of play live stream showcasing new gameplay of Horizon Forbidden West. To say that the game looks incredible would be a massive understatement. The in-engine cutscenes and actual gameplay blend together seamlessly. The original game had a fantastic sense of scale, but Forbidden West is taking it to another level. The environments showcased in the footage range from isolated beaches to thick forest cover to a vista overlook looking an overgrown and dilapidated Golden Gate Bridge. The combat in some sections of the video looked like it was ripped straight out of an anime film. The big boss battle towards the end of the video bears a striking resemblance to Legolas's takedown of an elephant from Lord of the Rings. It's obvious the developers are taking full advantage of the PlayStation 5 hardware for this game. Fans of the first game will also notice the expanded combat mechanics and terrain traversal system. Alloy has a new glider that lets her descend from high elevations quickly. She also has a new focus scanner that highlights climbing and grapple spots in the terrain. Her spear now has a variety of combo attacks and can be used in close range. And there are several new ranged attacks like sticky grenades that literally make enemies sticky, armor piercing arrows, and arrows with explosive tips. Unfortunately, the video doesn't give us a release date for the game. We know it will launch on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Hopefully, it'll also get a PC release down the line. 
Cyberpunk 2077 has a new game director. Gabriel Amatanglio previously worked on Dragon Age Inquisition and Star Wars The Old Republic. He will oversee the development of Cyberpunk's expansions. The game's studio had several high-profile employees depart around the game's release. CD Projekt Red recently announced a new direction for the company that will have it tackle multiple AAA projects at once. Historically, they focused on one game at a time. But thanks to the success of Cyberpunk, they've been able to dramatically expand both the company and their ambitions. The first major patch for Elite Dangerous's new expansion, Odyssey, just launched. It contains fixes for a wide variety of bugs covering almost every aspect of the game. The expansion adds space legs and FPS combat to the space sim. Unfortunately, its launch was quite rough and led to the studio's head personally apologizing. The update resolves several key issues players have been complaining about, but more are still unresolved. Future updates will iron things out, but there's no ETA on when they'll be deployed. PvE and PvP Looter Shooter Scavengers is hosting a big event this weekend. Players will be able to join a massive 5,000 player lobby. They'll compete in minigames and battle it out in a large-scale combat mode. While the game's core mode only supports a few dozen players per match, Scavengers is built using tech called Spatial OS. This gives it the ability to support thousands of players at once. The developers plan on expanding the map and available modes to support more and more players over time. So far, it seems like the initial test Testing has been successful. This weekend's test kicks off Saturday afternoon. It looks like Activision might start requiring two-factor authentication to play Warzone. Players can enable two-factor authentication to get two one-hour double XP battle pass tokens in Warzone and Cold War right now. It requires using the Google Authenticator app. This might be a hint that Activision will require all accounts to use two-factor authentication in the future. Part of why cheating in Warzone is so bad is that creating or buying a new account is trivial. Requiring two-factor authentication adds an extra step to this process. That probably won't significantly impact cheaters, but it might deter some who are unwilling to reauthorize their phones every time they get banned. Crossplay for a Rainbow Six Siege is around the corner. The developers are currently testing the system out and will have a proper announcement on June 12th. They'll cover both crossplay and cross progression during the presentation, which is great news for folks with a deep investment in the game's cosmetics. Considering cheating is a big concern for Siege players on PC, it'll be interesting to see if the announcement also includes a reveal of updated anti-cheat solutions. CSGO's latest update includes a new feature designed to catch cheaters red-handed. The game's competitive scene was recently shaken by its biggest scandal ever. A bug allowed coaches to spectate areas of the map freely, giving their team a massive advantage. Dozens of coaches allegedly used this exploit to help ensure victory during big-name events and tournaments over the past two years, if not longer. The game's most recent update now includes a system that records the coach camera during a match. This will let anyone go back and check to see if a coach abuses their position. And while Valve fixed the bug the same day it was exposed, it's clear that they want to keep a closer eye on coaches from now on. Before we get to our final story, I just want to say happy Friday, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow with a recap of this week's top stories. Be sure to check it out in case you missed anything like the leaked Battlefield trailer or Valve making a portable Steam console. Medieval Melee Brawler Chivalry 2 is now in open beta. Players can gain access by logging into the Epic Game Store. It offers five maps, crossplay with Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, and several modes to choose from. The original Chivalry kickstarted a wave of historical melee brawlers, and many consider Mordhau to be a spiritual successor to that game. But Chivalry 2 is shaping up to be the true sequel fans have been really waiting for. Everything, especially the beheadings, has been cranked up to 11. The beta ends on June. June 1st and the game launches properly on the 8th. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Outriders if you got a chance and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.